Which one of these are the better hog? Is it the shaved one or is it the puffball? Manscaped, please sponsor me. Who is more fun to play? Who is the worst? Does the combat fit Sonic or does it not? But most importantly, does Sonic Unleashed or Sonic Frontiers have the better combat? Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Here's my plugs and let's continue. Okay, okay, now this is one of the biggest recent debates ever since Sonic Frontiers came out. I've been looking for a direct video about this topic on YouTube and I'm surprised no one has came out and talked about this yet. So that's pretty much where I come in. I decided to make a community poll about Sonic Frontiers and Sonic Unleashed on what makes the better combat for Sonic the Hedgehog. I trust my community and I expect it may be a close battle, but unfortunately, I did not get that. I looked at the poll and it was a whopping 15% for Sonic Unleashed and 85 towards Sonic Frontiers. Remember when we thought that Sonic Unleashed Werehog was underrated? Whatever happened to those days? I knew it was fake. I knew it. I knew it. There's been numerous conversations on Twitter, Reddit, and almost every social media platform on which combat style is the best for Sonic. I'm glad I decided to do this topic because I've just finished Devil May Cry 5 and God of War, so this will be the best advice you will ever get in your life. Now, before I continue, I have to say that this is my opinion, even if it's a fact. And I'll put these topics in specific categories so you guys will understand a little bit easier. So the first thing, I will say variety. Like, do you do the same things all the time? Does the game force you to do something different? Different. Next we got progress. Is leveling up fun? Is it annoying or is it dumb? Is it any of these things? And then we're gonna be talking about what other people think about the Werehog and Sonic Frontiers. And this will be pretty interesting. And lastly, is the combat fun? Is it engaging? Does it feel good? And before y'all kill me, like I say again, this is all just my opinion. So let's begin. Let's start off with the variety of both the games and see which one does it better. So let's start off with Sonic Unleashed and the variety of the combat levels and most importantly, the enemies. The enemies are one of the most important thing for a hack and slash game or just any other single player game in general. And fortunately or unfortunately, Sonic Unleashed Werehog section is a hack and slash game. Although before we talk about the enemies, we have to talk about what we can do to defeat those enemies. And let's be realistic, there are a variety of moves you can use, but there's no reason to use them, or you really don't even have to use them. Which is why people like to call this game button mashy. Unfortunately, they took inspiration from God of War, instead of the superior Devil May Cry. Now, I don't hate the warehouse combat, but realistically, we don't utilize the combos all that often. We use maybe like three, maybe five, but the amount of gameplay footage I've seen from other people seems like I'm not the only one. However, besides punching and kicking, we have to talk about the rage and blocking. Did you know you can actually roll while blocking? Decades of me playing this game, I had no idea you can do that because they really don't tell you. The blocking is actually fine for me since when you get hit, you can only get hit for an amount of shields that you have which is good, it makes it a little harder, including having the abilities to grab and throw enemies is actually pretty cool. So that's a plus one for the Werehog, although the Rage should have been the default speed, and I do not care. The Werehog already packs a punch, but he feels way too slow, but the Rage speeds him up, including making him more powerful. The Rage boost is the best way to play this game and make sure to fill it up to the max. You will not regret it. However, what's the point of fighting if you don't have enemies? So come on, you have to admit, the enemies in this game isn't terrible, but you know the variety could have been a lot better than it actually is. So we have the jobber enemies like Nightmare, Egg Robos, and all the flying enemies. Then the harder enemies like the Masters, the Deep Nightmares, and the Egg Knights. You know, the one with the sword and shields. And the Egg Launchers, the Egg Shooter, the Egg Flame, Egg, 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 Egg. egg. Then lastly, we have the Giants like the Titan and Big Mama. I probably missed some, but they're a good variety of enemies. Rarely some characters force you to grab them, but in general, the enemy should suggest you to compliment the Werehog game. Play. Although I said suggest and not encourage you because most of the time I just see everyone including myself just button mashing and eventually brute forcing your way to defeat the enemies. And you know what would fix all that? If the Werehog had a difficulty scale, basically where the enemies were actually strong if not stronger than you, actually forcing you to utilize the Werehog gameplay to the fullest potential. Now you might have noticed I didn't go full force into the mini bosses like the Titan or Big Mama because honestly they fall into the 
same pile. Now understand, I'm not saying the enemies are bad, besides the annoying bee thing, but I'm saying that they don't influence the variety of moves that you can do. Yes, you can block, but what's the point if you could just kill them before they get close? You can roll, but the roll is so bad. And slow. The platforming utilizes the Werehog moveset more than the actual combat. And yeah, quick time events are cool, but you have to admit, it drags down the time compared to just, well, you know, hitting them. I know it sounds like I'm not talking so highly about the Werehog, but there's a reason why people like to say that there's only 50% of the game is good. Like I say again, the Werehog is not bad, but the variety is isn't the best it could be. You have a lot of moves you can do, but it's pretty limited because what's the point? This should be more balance and influence. Although, can it still be better than Sonic Frontiers? So Sonic Frontiers variety is unique for the Sonic fandom, but everywhere else, it's pretty common. But you know Sonic Team, they eventually catch up. So when I was talking about Unleashed, I mentioned God of War because it's common knowledge and they themselves also admitted it too. Now Sonic Frontiers has the clear inspiration of Devil May Cry, which should have been the main inspiration in the first place. So Sonic has a lot more moves and combo opportunities than the Werehog. We have a total of 15 moves. Some are better than others, but most can be pretty useful. You got competent aerial moves to deal with those pesky flyers and more grounded moves for more damage. You can either have the patience of a god and keep your distance and spam Sonic Boom and bootleg Sonic Boom, or just go in and do some heavy damage with the potential of getting hit or the most common way, just doing anything that comes to mind. I like the mix of both. Basically basically making your own combos, instead of being stuck with the preset combo. And clone the combat is significantly faster. We also have additional defensive moves like the parry, dodge, drop dash. Okay, okay, I'm gonna say this, the drop dash is useless. I just said it because it's just instinct. But still, you have a good amount of moves. However, does the enemies influence you to do something different? Well, yes. Okay, there's a good amount of enemies in this game because Sonic Team finally got a little bit of budget because of the recent Sonic movie. Most enemies don't really force you to adapt, despite how dynamic the game makes you feel. And a lot of them kind of requires you to side loop because the fact that the side loop is just very OP. Besides, it does change up things. I do admit, side looping everything does get a bit stale. And you know what else gets a bit stale? The skill gap or the lack of a skill gap. I promise this part is still part of the variety topic. So those cool moves you can do and the fact that you can cancel them is, like I said, pretty cool. You feel so fast and powerful, although it does get to the point that you just feel so powerful at the start that you just feel undefeatable. And to be honest, you kinda are. This is kinda the same like Sonic Unleashed, as it comes to the point that you mostly die just falling off the world than actually dying by the enemies. And come on, you know I'm gonna be talking about this. The self ring side looping, like it just makes the combat even easier. And to be honest, I can't even decide if it's bad or not because I use this so much. Although something I can admit is the fact that why does the parry not require skill on hard mode? If the game is supposed to be hard mode, why is holding the parry so instantly broken? Why does it make me fly? It kind of ruins the variety because if you want to, all you have to do is just hold parry and attack. And it makes it worse is when the enemies are kind of easy. I praise Ornos for the hard battles. I just wish that the hard mode was actually hard mode. That even bogs down to the bosses. We have a lot of bosses in this game compared to the two that was in the Werehog sections. All the bosses are pretty fun. They utilize punching, kicking, skydiving, wading, side loop, and a lot of others. Sure, you have to move out the way to not to get hit, but it still falls into the same thing. Approach enemy, kill. I just wish they didn't make the side loop so OP. Some of the bosses kinda sorta utilize the combat variety. Although, there is one type of enemy that completely marks all the checks on what I am looking for in terms of variety. So the ninja variations is the best bosses in the entire game. And I'm just gonna say it, maybe in the entire franchise. There's a reason why you don't hear anyone talking bad about her, because she's that good. Of course the Arnold's version is the best version because she's actually a challenge. The boss forces you to move, forces you to parry fast because she actually moves behind you. She forces you to do big combos instead of using Phantom Rush or Sonic Boom because she teleports away from you when she gets hit too much. including slowing down time so you gotta do stuff early i love her so much i don't think i said this yet but i've played devil may cry 5 and this is so much similar to fear to dmc 5 
he moves so fast and you constantly have to be on your guard. It is awesome. Sonic Frontiers is nowhere close to DMC5 in terms of quality, but the Ninja Variations is one of those characters that we need for future Sonic games. It pushes variety and makes the game so much better. But what is the journey like getting there? We just talked about the variety section and now let's move on to the progress. So the progression for the Werehog is actually pretty good. Now remember, I'm talking about the combat progression, not the overall Sonic Unleashed progression. You start off with not a lot of HP, shield, strength, or rage because you're just starting off. Compared to Sonic Frontiers where you basically have 400 ring count, kinda lowers the risk. Me personally, I like some challenges in my Sonic games. So of course you had to defeat the enemies, gather XP to level yourself up. Pretty simple. You get to choose what to level up and from experience, I mostly see people level up their health and rage more. Oh, and you also got this combo meter. See, I want to tell you a small story. For my entire life, I've only played the Wii version of Sonic Unleashed. The first time I played the HD version was back in 2020 on the trash PlayStation Now with Wi-Fi. Look how laggy it is! The hit didn't even spawn! However, something I do remember other than the lag that I know for a fact I never went to the combos tab when I level up my combo meter. Because you know why? They don't influence us to look at the combos. Yeah, the text says you unlock blank combo in some gray box with skinny white text. How about maybe saying you unlock the wear clap showing us how to do the combo in a short animated gif. You know, like some other game. Then maybe past me would have been a little bit more cautious about that skill list. You know what else would have been good? A speed meter, but overall pretty simple and solid progression system. Nothing really additional to unlock, and there's really nothing bad about it on a big scale. Because you can choose to do more damage, you can choose to do more combos, or you can just choose to just go wild. I wish I watched a lot of Sonic Unleashed speed runs back in the day, because I would love to use the combos to skip hearing the battle music. Overall, solid. But what about Sonic Frontiers? The progression in Sonic Frontiers can be a mix of fun and annoying. Honestly, so it's basically the same like almost every game ever. Collect XP and level yourself up. But for Sonic Frontiers, it's more of what you want to unlock, like Devil May Cry 5. So you have this skill tree and depends on the XP level that you have, on what skill you want to buy. Simple democracy, honestly. If you have 15 bucks, you get to do SPOTTED! If not, now you die. The only things you can't actually unlock okay, is the three options on the right. And you can only unlock them by just basically progressing through the game. Also, you got these other progression upgrades like the attack and defense, the ring count, and the speed. And yikes, only one half of these things are pretty useful. So remember when I talked about Sonic Unleashed where you don't have to collect things in order to upgrade your combat? Well, the thing is you have to collect the Cocos and go to these old Coco people to upgrade. No big deal. For the attack and defense, you have to go to this cool old dude and he automatically levels you up to the max. That's good because that's what most people want to upgrade, the attack and defense. No problem. Then sometimes I forget that we're playing a Sonic game and there's always that one annoying thing that everyone just hates. So the speed and ring level up is basically useless to me. The speed only makes your non-boosting speed faster, but realistically, everyone already holds the boost button unless you're platforming because you want precise movement. I don't upgrade my rings because it makes getting the super boost pretty slow. So that's a no-go for me. But let's just say you want to max it out. Well, you have to go to this smaller Elder Coco and you have to individually wait for this long animation for the level to go up by one. is not fun. What the fuck is this? Imagine how worse it would be if the level ups were actually good. But besides that flaw, the progression system is actually pretty solid, but a little bit more complex or on the same bar as Sonic Unleashed. But let's get to the most controversial part and the most fun part of the video. Is the combat fun? Now let's put away our pitchforks and start with the Werehog. I'm sorry, but this might sound scary, but you don't need to be fast in order to have good combat. Although it does depend on the tone of the game and the feeling. It's like comparing Dark Souls to Devil May Cry. 
They both have different styles of combat, and they both are fun in their own way. Although Dark Souls is significantly slower than Devil May Cry or Sonic Frontiers. So why do people say Dark Souls have good combat? I promise this is still a Sonic video. But for Dark Souls, because the game revolves and rewards the player with skill and knowledge, including it feels good when you land these heavy blows in the game. Kind of discouraging button mashing. And honestly, when you button mash for so long, it does tend to get boring. Yeah, I get it, the Werehog is slow. And to me personally, it would mesh better if the entire game was like that. But unfortunately, you literally have the fastest gameplay in Sonic's or video game's history. And before you say anything, yes, this affects the combat. Because I rarely or don't see anyone going back to play Sonic Unleashed to just play the night stages. I'm not gonna lie, the quick time events is pretty cool and all, but the flow just gets ruined. And that's the problem with the Werehog. The pacing of the combat is just not working. If you're gonna have slow combat, your movement and knowledge should be important. Your combo should be important too. Like it wouldn't hurt when a hit bar shows up when approaching a new enemy. Maybe they could have said, hey, did you know you can use this combo to make enemies fly into the air? Oh, hey, you can grab enemies while blocking. Just subtle hints like that also helps encourage players to do something different. But like I say again, I never said the Werehog is bad because the pacing is just not right. Unless you have full rage, which makes it better. I was watching this video about all the combo moves in this game and I was surprised by the amount of combos you can pull off in this game. I had no idea you could body slam someone out of the air. Then I thought to myself, wow, these combos are pretty cool, but I only beat the entire game by only using three moves. And don't lie, y'all did the same. Because like I say again, the enemies are not inspiring you to change. Of course they got shields and flight, but what's the point if you can easily just destroy the shield? You know, I know, I know it sounds like I'm completely trashing on the Werehog. Like I say again, the Werehog is not bad, but it could be better. Just make him faster and and make the enemies influence the combat skills instead of just letting us button mash all the time. Okay, I think we was on the Werehog section for a little bit too long. And it's time for me to get on Sonic Frontiers. So Sonic Frontiers have a lot of moves than Sonic Unleashed, but are they important? Do they impact the playstyle at all? Do they feel the same? Is it fun? Sonic Frontiers is way faster than Sonic Unleashed. And me just saying that already convinced 85% of the Sonic fandom. But still, the flow of the combat is pretty good because the last time Sonic had combat besides homing attacking was unironically Sonic Unleashed. I feel like they understood the problem with the Werehog and actually made it a little bit better. Although there are still problems. The combat in Sonic Frontiers have a lot more freedom and opportunities than Sonic Unleashed, which can make it better. You're able to cancel moves on the whim, dodge fast, and just do everything fast and heavy. Playing Sonic Frontiers feels like Sonic, but it does get repetitive, but not in the way of Sonic Unleashed. You eventually fight so much and you start to realize that you're using the same moves over and over again. Again. Mostly by the fact that Sonic is just way too powerful. And it makes it worse is when you're literally invincible by just holding the parry. It kind of ruins the fun tension and the skill ceiling. Sonic Boom, Phantom Rush, Psyloop, Stomp, Spin Slash, you use them all the time and you're just pretty much doing the same thing, but in different ways. And the thing is that they don't require any skill and that's pretty fine because the flow of Sonic Frontiers is really good and is unmatched by the Sonic fandom. Okay, before I get to the conclusion and my overall thoughts, I decided to talk to my community and ask them on what they believe on which combat style is better for them. I like both combat systems, but I think Sonic Frontiers excels at making Sonic look powerful and flashy at normal, while the Werehog excels in more move variety and a lots of ways to take down the enemies, which, you know, me personally, I do kind of agree. I like Unleashed for his Looney Tune-ass combat animations. There's sheer joy just picking up an enemy and chucking at another one and hearing the cartoon slapping noises. Slapping noises. <laughs> but I think Sonic Frontiers better really realizes how Sonic can actually fight. Constantly moving, buzzing around the enemy like a fly, with some tweaking that can really make Sonic combat feel special and fun. Which, honestly, I do agree. This is the closest way of how Sonic would literally just fight, instead of just turning into a ball. Both simply boil down to spamming different button combinations for damage, and mostly rely on that one combo that's easy to pull off and does good damage. I guess Sonic Frontier's combat flows a lot better since it works with Sonic's main movement, and you can play with Sonic's momentum to take shortcuts, and to be them faster occasionally. You need to do more than just punches and kicks, which keeps the game varied. Essentially, Frontiers combat have a higher skill ceiling. If you're not punching and kicking with the Werehog, you're doing QTEs. There are more combos to pull off, but do you really use them? But yes, I do agree that there's a lot of just that one combo that everyone use. Unleashed has a very fun combat system, even with how mind-numbing it is. It is very satisfying just watching everything get pulverized by the Werehog. And to be honest, I think the daytime sections balance it out well. But 
man. Sonic Frontiers is so much better, so much interesting, even more satisfying and far more varied than basic shield and big enemies. Okay, clearly he's talking about Sonic Unleashed. But yeah, I I understand where you're coming from. Ooh, ooh I like this one. This made me think. Mechanically, I like Sonic Unleashed as it seems to have the most versatile and variety of attacks to use in the combat, in my opinion. It felt like it was trying to replicate something out of God of War or Kingdom Hearts. I wasn't a big fan of quick time events though, but Sonic Frontiers has simplicity and accessibility. It's quick and very consistent supply of easy dopamine. You can run super fast and pick your fights depending on your level. You can engage in flurry of punches, combos, or parries to kill your enemy or simply blow them away and just obliterate everything. This isn't including the anime style supersonic boss fights because that makes that debate way too easy. I do agree that and that's the main reason why I didn't mention supersonic. But overall, I think my community has some really good takes. I, these guys are pretty smart. All these are good observations because people like different types of gameplay and flow. Also, I got one more thing. I promise this is not a paid ad, but something for the Sonic community. There is this event called Sonic Fan Games First on the 23rd of February. I will be there to see what type of awesome Sonic fan games and mods alike. Right now, I am interested in the Sonic Adventure Pack, mostly because I love drum and bass. But there's so many awesome creators coming to this event on February 23rd. Who knows? One of us might enter it one day. Overall, Sonic Unleashed, Werehog, and Sonic Frontiers combat isn't perfect, but none are bad either. The Werehog has a lot more versatile combo potential, despite people not utilizing them, but it gets bogged down by the lack of variety of the enemies and the repetitiveness. Sonic Frontiers has amazing flow and awesome enemy variety and fast combat, but you're just way too strong. It kind of ruins the fun sometimes, but both problems have this. It's the fact that the combat is just too repetitive and just way too easy. But most importantly on why it's so hard to decide if Sonic Unleashed or Sonic Frontiers is better because of this reason. It's the fact that Rouge the Bat is not in neither of these games. Oh and also Sonic Frontiers is better. <laughs>